am Army Chaplain Anthony Kelly. And today I want to talk to you about the Restoration Movement. That is a movement to restore New Testament Christianity back to its roots found in the New Testament and the biblical teachings of Christ found therein. It goes back to the 19th century to the Stone-Campbell Movement. That is Barton W. Stone, Thomas Campbell, and Alexander Campbell. They were all Presbyterian ministers. Thomas Campbell in 1809 wrote a declaration and address to combat some of the abuses that were found within the church at that time. In that declaration address, he writes that divisions among Christians are inherently evil, fraught with many evils. He saw all those abuses, and thus he sought to correct those things. His son had a dilemma as well. Alexander had a child born in 1812. And in 1812, he, being a Presbyterian minister, had that dilemma of whether to baptize his infant child. Now, as he sought the scriptures, there is no case of baptism for infants found within the scriptures or even in the New Testament. And so as he searched the scriptures, he found in the book of Acts, there are many cases of conversions, but they're all for adult believers, people who come to faith on their own and can repent or confess Christ's name and be water baptized by immersion, not by sprinkling. In Acts 2.38, Peter declares to the crowd to repent and be baptized, each and every one of you, for the remission of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is for adult believers or people who believe cognitively at the age of accountability on their own, that they can repent of all of their sins and acknowledge that they're a sinner, that they come to faith and belief in Christ, that they confess Christ's holy name, and then that Jesus is Christ, the Son of the living God, and then be water baptized by total immersion, as the New Testament Greek indicates and declares. So Alexander Campbell had that decision to make. And instead of baptizing his child, he and all the adults in his family, including Thomas Campbell, his father, all were baptized together. New Testament Christianity is vital. We are bound by the New Testament for all things in faith or in practice. So I am a Christian church, Churches of Christ minister. That is a group, a brotherhood of churches adhering to the principles of the restoration movement. Now, I'm not part of a denomination. We are not a denomination. We are a brotherhood of group of churches that seeks to be, in all things, Christians only. We will speak where the Bible speaks and be silent where the Bible silent. And we have no other creed than that of Christ. Some characteristics, though, of the Christian church is number one, like I mentioned, baptism by immersion for believers. Those people who have the age of accountability, who can believe in acknowledgement of sin, can and should be baptized as an essential aspect of the salvation process. I personally believe that that's where you meet the blood of Jesus Christ spiritually in the water. The water is nothing magical, but it is where we identify ourselves with Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection found in Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Also, another characteristic of the Christian churches and churches of Christ, this restoration movement, is that of weekly communion. The early church met the first day of the week to break bread and prayer. Also, The early church's practice was to partake in the Lord's Supper daily, as it finds at the end of Acts chapter 2. So the early church was dedicated in partaking of the Lord's Supper, a continuation of the Seder meal that Jesus turned and shown that this is my body, this is my blood. So we remember Christ Jesus in this way, in partaking of the elements, the bread that represents the body, the juice that represents the shed blood of Jesus Christ. This is a remembrance ceremony, not transubstantiation, but a remembrance ceremony to remember Jesus and his death, burial, and resurrection. Nowhere in the scriptures does Jesus tell us to remember his birth, but he does tell us to remember his death. Also, the interesting characteristic of the Christian churches, churches of Christ, is that they are self-autonomous. Like I said earlier, we are not part of any denomination. There is no denominational headquarters telling us what to do. Each church is self-autonomous, meaning self-governing. 
So we have a body of elders and deacons and a minister, usually a paid minister, within the church. And that church is governed by itself, by led by the elders and the deacons and congregation, congregationally led to be able to make decisions for itself. So one church down the street from another cannot tell each other what to do. They may be part of the brotherhood together. They may be both Christian churches or churches of Christ, and they fellowship with one another, but they don't tell each other what to do. So that is self-autonomy. See, the Christian churches and churches of Christ seeks to follow the Bible, namely the New Testament and all things for faith and practice. Now, the books behind me, they may be great and useful for teaching or preaching. They may have truth in them, but they're not binding upon me for my faith and my practice of that faith. But the New Testament is. So man-made doctrines and man-made, which are teachings, are maybe great in and of themselves, but they're not binding upon the Christian. So I don't have to do what the one author tells me to do. Man-made doctrines may be great and useful in some re- ways, but they're not binding upon the Christian. So I became a Christian within the Christian churches and churches of Christ. I then, as an adult, studied in various different denominations, what the Baptists thought, what Pentecostals thought, all different types of groups. And I realized that it was only in the restoration movement did I find that people of like-mindedness sought to seek the Scriptures and sought to follow the New Testament only for faith and for practice. Now, I'm an army chaplain. I have to play and get along with all people of all different denominations, all different groups, from chaplains from every faith group there are known, from Baptists to Pentecostals to Mormons to Catholic priests, Episcopalians, Presbyterians, all different denominations are represented in the military. And I can get along with them. They respect me and I respect them. But here's the thing. I do not compromise my faith just to get along. And that's what a unity movement is about. We don't compromise our essential faith and core of faith and belief in the New Testament and its teachings in order to give that up in order to be unified. But sadly... The restoration movement is divided today. We have three main branches. First of all, you have the Church of Christ, a cappella, which is, I would say, on the far right. And then you have the independent Christian churches and churches of Christ in the middle and the disciples of Christ in the far left. So the movement is divided, but we are still seeking and still searching and still striving to unify under the New Testament as a way for us to be guided by the principles of Jesus Christ and the teachings of Jesus Christ found in the Gospels and the Epistles, all within the New Testament. I hope this video has helped you. I pray it has. And may God's grace be upon you to seek the Scriptures out, to find out what's true or not, and to know that we can do, be Christians only and do all things for Christ. Jesus. Amen.